So hi everyone, my name is Julie Dobrow. I am the Dean of Admissions and Financial Aid at the School of the Arts. I am also a proud alum of the theater management and producing concentration of the theater program. So I have been in and around Columbia for a very long time and I truly love this school. Um, I first want to introduce to you the members of the uh, financial aid staff, because if you have any questions over the next weeks and months, we will be the people uh, who can assist you. So there's me. Um, there's Kenny Wong, who's our director of admissions and financial aid. Can you want to give a wave? <laughs> there he is. And we have Nikwet Johnson, who is our admissions and financial aid officer. Nikwet is here. There's a wave. Um, we don't have Tori Sheffer on the call, although you may have met her uh, previously. She's our admissions assistant. Um, she's the one who is uh, who answers the phone calls and the emails. So uh, many of you may have spoken to Tori or seen her on one of these other Q and A sessions. Um, but we are we're a small team, but we're mighty, um, and we do what we can to help you uh, figure out a way to finance your education. So. Um, we're gonna do a short presentation today. So I'm gonna ask you if you can to hold the questions until the end of the presentation because many of your questions may be answered during it. Um, when you do have questions or if you do have questions, you can either put them in the chat or you can raise your Zoom hand, um, whichever you prefer. We're fine with both of those. Um, all right, so let's get started. Um, and uh, this session is gonna run until around 8 p.m. Um, if you have questions after the session is over, we will put the financial aid email address in the chat, um, and you can always send uh, questions to that address as well, or if something comes up in the next couple of weeks, etc. I actually don't think this is the first page. Kenny, do you mind going back a little? Oh, I guess it is. Okay. All right, tuition and fees. I guess that's the most important thing that uh, people want to know. Um, so um, all of our MFA programs require two years of full-time coursework. Um, this is everything from uh, theater, film, visual arts, and writing. Um, these are the MFA programs. Um, the first two years are at the full tuition rate. Um, and I, I'm going to give you a link in the next slide where you can see what the tuition is. Um, students who are in film, theater, or writing um, have the option of uh, a third year, and in fact, almost all film, uh, really all film and theater students um, take that option. Uh, the third year is called research arts. You're actually not in classes full time, um, and as such, the tuition rate is drastically lower. So uh, it's about eight or nine percent of, of the full time rate of the other two years. So you're really looking at two years at the full tuition rate. Um, those of uh, the students who are research arts status maintain full-time status. So if you're an international student, you're still considered full-time. Um, you can also still apply for loans uh, as a student, but the amount you can borrow is lower because uh, the tuition cost is so much lower for that third year. For our visual arts and our sound arts students, those are two-year programs. So you will graduate after the, the second year. Um, there's no research arts option for those um, cohorts. Um, and I'm gonna talk about film MA in a second. Um, there's fees on top of tuition, which include health services fee, university services and support fee, um, a couple other small fees, which will uh, you can see on the, the next page, which we have right here. Um, here's the link. It's arts.columbia.edu forward slash tuition. Um, that's where you can find the tuition. It, it tends to increase by about three to four percent every year. Um, but you can at least look and see what it looks like now. Um, one of the fees that you'll see is medical insurance. Uh, medical insurance can be waived if you can provide proof of comparable coverage. Um, it has to be a US-based uh, health insurance uh, plan. So unfortunately, international students, if you have health insurance from your own country, you'll still have to get the insurance through Columbia. Um, the MA in Film and Media Studies is structured a little bit differently. It's a, about a year and a half in residence. Um, the first year is full tuition. Um, and the second year is what we call extended residence, where you are mostly working on your thesis. Um, and if you go to the same link, this arts.columbia.edu forward slash tuition, you'll see the rates for that as well. And just keep in mind, these are the rates for 23, 24. Um, and as I said, they'll go up, you know, three or 4% uh, for next year. All right, next slide. Thank you. Um, so this is really, really, really important. I want to make sure that you all hear this. Um, the School of the Arts admissions process is need blind. What this means is that the faculty committees who are reviewing your application are not paying attention and in fact don't even have access to the information about your need level. So please do not worry um, if you need to apply for scholarship support. Do not be concerned that that will reduce your chances of getting admitted. That is absolutely not the case. Um, you'll see that some of the several of the application deadlines, in fact most of them, um, are uh, weeks if not months prior to the financial aid application deadlines. So the faculty begin reviewing your applications before we even have your financial aid information. So uh, again, 
please don't be shy. If you are in need of uh, scholarship support, please do submit the applications and we will talk about that next. So how do you apply for financial aid? Um, if you are a US citizen or permanent resident, we ask you to submit a FAFSA. Um, many of you may be familiar with that from your undergraduate education. Um, the deadline is February 1st. Um, now there's a little caveat this year. Um, you may have heard that they, uh, there's actually a complete um, new version of the FAFSA that's supposedly coming out. Uh, we're told on, I think, December 31st, which is you know in another couple of weeks. Um, if that is delayed um, and you don't feel that you can submit the FAFSA in time, please let our office know. Um, we're happy to give extensions, um, particularly because the application is, is coming out so late. It's normally out on October 1st. But try your best to get it in by February 1st. Um, and the school code for SOA is, is here, 002707. Um, try to put uh, the, school, the uh, school of the Arts school code, not regular Columbia University, because then we won't be able to access your files. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so if you're a US citizen as well, and a permanent resident, and international students, we ask all of you to submit our own financial aid application, um, also due on February 1st. Um, this you can find through the application portal. Um, this gives us much more information than the FAFSA does. Um, it gives you the opportunity to explain your situation. There's, there's a, a section where you can kind of give, uh, you know, anecdotal information on, on what your particular financial situation is. Um, and this is required for anyone who wants to be considered for scholarship support. So again, if you want to be considered for aid um, in the form of scholarships, US citizens and permanent residents need to submit two forms, both the FAFSA and the School of the Arts uh, financial aid application. International students only have to submit the one form, which is the School of the Arts financial application. Uh, next slide. So there are three main types of financial aid. Um, the first is scholarships, which we were just talking about a little bit. Um, there's also work opportunities, both at the School of the Arts and at Columbia uh, as a whole, um, and there's loans. So the first one is scholarships. Um, scholarships range from $10,000 a year to full tuition. Um, please note the full tuition ones are pretty rare. Um, we have about any in any given year between 10 and 15 of them across the entire school. Um, so I, you know, I don't want you to apply assuming that you'll be getting that, um, but uh, they do exist and we do have um, a few of them. Um, this uh, current first year class, 78% um, of all the first years who uh, started this fall received scholarship funding. Um, and the scholarship amount is determined through a combination of need and merit. So we determine your need through the applications that I just was talking about, um, through the FAFSA and the School of the Arts, um, our own financial aid application. Merit is determined by the Faculty Admissions Committee. So they're ranking students based on the merit and we are ranking students based on the need. And then there's kind of this algorithm that goes in. Um, you know, if you are very high merit, but you have no need, you won't uh, likely receive any scholarship support. Um, we try to give all students who have high need at least something because we realize it's an expensive program in an expensive city. So, um, but that's, that's how the amounts are determined. <clears throat> so the scholarships that you receive are renewable in your second year. Um, at the same amount, uh, we usually give you a, a slight percentage increase, uh, which is the um, percentage that tuition is increased. So if tuition is increased by 4%, you'll get 4% more um, in your scholarship in your second year. This is assuming good academic and behavioral standing, but this is very rarely an, an issue. Um, we have specialized scholarships for veterans. So if you are a vet, please contact our office and we can tell you about those. Um, and there are no scholarships for research arts students. Um, as I said before, research arts is um, the third year that film and theater and some writing students elect to do. Um, the tuition is much, much less. Um, I think this year was around $6,000 for the year. Um, so we do not provide scholarships for research arts students, only for your first two years of study. So that's scholarships, work opportunities. Um, there's several different types of work opportunities. Um, there's something called work study. Um, that is limited to US citizens and permanent residents who have submitted a FAFSA. Um, the uh, information that you submit on the FAFSA is what determines your eligibility for work study positions. And there are positions both in the School of the Arts and throughout the university. So those positions, if they're labeled work study are limited to students who have a work study allocation. Um, the typical allocation, we start with $5,000. Um, and then we can increase it um, if, in fact, there's more work and you've run out, uh, which we do our best to increase those if we can. Then there's something that we call service positions, which is a term that we kind of made up in the School of the Arts, uh, but they're for positions that we have um, in the school. They range from $22 to $25 an hour. 
Um, and they can be as few as three hours a week. They can be up to 20 hours a week. Um, and the physicians vary greatly. Um, they're faculty assistants. They are um, projectionists. They are um, students who we call uh, the space team who help clean up our spaces in the, in the theater rooms. Um, they are um, working in our communications team, collecting um, news items, uh, posting on social media. Um, those types of things. Um, the service positions by and large go to second and third year students. However, over the past couple of years, we have opened some to first years as well. Um, so what will happen is we'll send an email um, sometime over the summer with the positions that are open to first years and you can apply for those. Um, unlike work study in which you need to be a US citizen or permanent resident and have a work study allocation, Service positions are open to everyone. They are open to US citizens. They are open to international students. You don't need to show need. Um, in many cases, the service positions are, are valuable in helping you with your future career. Um, they're positions that you know, might, help, might be great for your resume. So um, we encourage you to apply for them. And we have many, many service positions. They really help the school run. Um, you know, they, we, I don't know what we would do without them. So uh, we are happy to have you guys um, working with us. And then finally, there's teaching positions. Um, the uh, the number of teaching positions depends on the program. Um, uh, you know, it ranges from all visual arts students have two TA positions themselves. It's because of the size of the program. Um, the, uh, so you're TAing undergraduate classes. Um, there are there are TA positions in writing. There are TA positions in film. Um, there's occasionally a TA position or two in theater, but not as many. Um, and the teaching positions pay a combination of tuition, remission, and salary. Um, the total compensation of which is about $6,660 a year. Um, I did not make that up. That's actually the amount this year. Um, it'll probably go up a little bit next year, but the positions are certainly competitive um, because, you know, it's, it's wonderful to have teaching experience if you can get it. Um, hopefully, you know, um, because you're applying to the program or hopefully you'll, you'll, you'll be applying that an MFA is considered a terminal degree, which means you can teach at the university level after you have your MFA, you don't need a PhD. Um, so we certainly encourage you to apply for teaching positions and there are some um, teaching positions that are unpaid, um, particularly through the writing program, um, but they also give you incredibly valuable experience. So um, we encourage you to look into those. Next slide, federal loans. Okay, so once again, this is limited to US citizens and permanent residents. Um, the FAFSA uh, is based on your tax return. Um, and for this year, they're gonna be asking you for information from 2022. Um, this is for fall 2024. <laughs> The federal direct unsubsidized loan, that is a fixed amount. It's $20,500 per year maximum. You can certainly take out less, but that is the most that you can take out of this type of loan. Uh, it is split into equal amounts uh, in the fall and spring semester. And this is, el anyone is eligible. If you are a US citizen or permanent resident, you can submit a FAFSA and you will receive this loan. Uh, it doesn't matter if you have poor credit. It doesn't matter if you have a trust fund, um, if you want to, uh, get access to this loan, then you can. The second loan um, is called the Graduate Plus Loan. Um, and this makes can make up the difference between the federal direct unsubsidized loan and the remaining cost of attendance. So you can use this the Graduate Plus Loan not only for the rest of tuition and fees, um, you can use it for room and board, you can use it for transportation. Um, there's a whole list of things that, that um, go into the cost of attendance that you can borrow um, through the Graduate Plus Loan for. This one does require a credit check. Um, if you have poor credit, um, you know, for instance, you've defaulted on a previous loan, um, if your credit card debt is, is significant, um, you may have issues getting that loan, but most of our students find that they're able to get that and, um, you know, the, the amount that you take out is really flexible depending upon um, what your needs are, you know, some students um, you know, have four roommates in a tiny apartment and some students have a one bedroom on their own. And obviously your, your monthly expenses are gonna vary based on, on um, those, those types of parameters. But those are the two loans that you can borrow through the federal government. There's also the option of private loans. Um, the terms may be better or worse than federal loans, depending upon the bank that you apply to, your credit history, all of that. 
Um, on Columbia's website, we have a list of suggested lenders. Um, so again, this is not something that you would do now, but if you are admitted, we can certainly point you in that direction. Um, and you know, you can shop around and see what types of, of rates they're gonna be offering. Uh, to you. International students, while you're not eligible for federal loans, you may be eligible for private loans through the United States, um, but most often you need a U.S.-based co-signer. So you may have a relative who lives here or someone else who's, who's um, a U.S. citizen or permanent resident who can co-sign on your behalf. That's private loans. Other sources of funding. Um, we have emergency aid. Um, we know that things come up. Um, you know, we've had students who have been evicted out of their apartments uh, because of, you know, some issues, the uh, fires, um, deaths in the family, that type of thing. Um, we have an emergency aid application that you would submit. It actually goes through our Office of Student Affairs, um, but we want to let you know. And, and that, that was a very robust fund during COVID. Um, we, we still have emergency aid uh, to give out in in situations that are emergent. Um, there's also two grants that the Dean's Office um, oversees, a Dean's gravel, uh, Travel Grant and Project Grants. Um, these are, uh, you would get specific information on how to apply for these, um, both for travel and for uh, specific projects you may be working on. Um, there's also production grants. Um, these are primarily for film production, um, but I believe that they exist in the other programs as well to a certain extent. Um, there's awards and prizes um, that uh, are awarded throughout the year, uh, usually, usually actually towards the end of the year uh, during thesis season. Um, and there's also outside scholarships and fellowships. We give you access to information on um, uh, outside scholarships and fellowships that we've researched, uh, many of which our students have gotten in the past. Um, so, uh, you know, those are, are other potential sources of, of income as well, or of, uh, of not income, but of uh, support, financial support. All right, next slide. Okay, um, so we are uh, at the end of the formal presentation. Um, I would just wanna make sure that you write down this uh, email address. Um, this is the best way to get in touch with the financial aid office. Um, you will hear from either Nequet or Kenny or myself. Um, we also, just, just one other piece of information that's important for you to know, we work very closely with Columbia's um, Office of Student Financial Planning. Um, they actually handle all of our uh, federal aid. So if you have a question, um, you know, uh, let's say you've, you've um, applied for a Graduate PLUS loan and um, you were denied and you want to submit um, uh, a second application or, or uh, you know, see if, see if they'll uh, reconsider, um, we might direct you to that, that office because they're the ones who are really the experts in federal aid. But everything else in terms of the institutional support um, goes through our office. So um, that's it. Why don't we, uh, oh, one more. Don't forget to submit your financial aid application. Um, by February 1st, 2024. Uh, those of you who have been in the application already um, can see that uh, we are asking you to, to check a box that says, I, if I check this box, it means I'm not interested in financial aid. Um, so make sure that you're paying attention to that. And we want to know if you're applying for aid, because um, when we make you an offer, um, that offer will contain um, the, the financial aid uh, as well. So please, please, please do not be late. Submit your financial aid applications by the February 1st deadline. Oh, my internet connection is unstable. I think maybe I'm frozen. Can you all hear me? Okay. Yes. Um, all right. So let's, um, let's go away from the PowerPoint. Looks like we have a couple questions that have come in already. Let's go with Rhea. Yes, uh, it's Ria. I yeah. should have asked this in the last information session that I was in, but I know that the second fee will be waived. Is that if you for application fees? Is that through different programs or the same program? Like if I was doing the film one and the poetry, or is it just like if I were doing poetry and fiction? So this is actually a new thing that we're doing this year, um, and I'm glad that all of you are here to hear about it. Um, we're only asking for one application fee. So if you decide to apply for say poetry and fiction, um, it's one application fee. If you decide to apply for poetry and screenwriting, it is also one application fee. Um, the problem is the system's gonna ask you for a second one. So we just ask you to reach out to the admissions office and then we can waive that second fee. Um, we're trying to encourage students, our, our students are so multidisciplinary. That's one of the hallmarks of the school. And we have many students who um, are interested in more than one concentration and or program. And we don't wanna discourage them from applying. Um, ultimately, if you get into more than one concentration, then the choice would be up to you as to which one you want to attend. You do have to choose one. You can't uh, really double major 
major, so to speak. Um, but yes, um, just let our office know if you want to submit more than one application and we will waive the fee for the second one. Awesome. And that's the same email, the financial aid email address. Actually, uh, this no. one would be the SOA admissions. We'll, we'll put it in the chat now. Okay. Thank you so much. Emerson. Uh, hi, I've got a, a couple, uh, one that's more applicable for all of us, but I'm just curious uh, for students who do receive aid, what is about the average that the amount that students receive? I thought I had that on a slide. Maybe I didn't. Oh, and that, I, would, that oh. might be one of the slides. So uh, it's anywhere usually between about 10 and $40,000. That tends to be what people receive. Um, the average range, it, it's different by program, but I would say 25 to 30-ish tends okay. to be tends to be where a lot of the aid lands, but there are students who are getting 10 and there are students who are getting a little bit more than that. So. All right, lovely, thank you. Uh, and then my second was a little bit more specific to myself, but I was curious about uh, TA positions within um, not your primary department. So I, for example, am applying in the School of Theater, but I have a lot of uh, opera background and have worked in uh, music, uh, schools of music before. So is that something that you see happening? Um, that's a very good question. Um, I actually don't know the answer to that because music is not part of School of the Arts. It's bizarre. It's, it's kind of some strange Columbia history, but music is actually part of the Graduate School of Arts and Sciences, not part of the School of the Arts. So I don't know um, if we've had any students who have TA'd as part of music. Um, you could certainly reach out to the Graduate Music Program and ask them. Um, it sounds like you have um, excellent skills. I, I don't know, though, uh, whether or not they hire students outside of their school. Okay, lovely. Thank you. Sure. Appreciate it. All right, uh, Saren, Saren. Hello, hi, uh, thank you for this opportunity. I have two questions. So my first one is, um, are teaching positions available for international students? Absolutely. Uh, oh, okay, perfect. Uh, and my second question was, you mentioned that there are like other outside scholarships and fellowships that are available. So is there like a list of outside scholarships and fellowships that students, including international students, could look into? Is there like a list or are we just kind of on our own to figure that out? Um, so we actually do have a database that we will give you access to once you're admitted to the program. Um, it's, uh, yes, and it, it has, as I said, it's, it's, it's something that's been compiled over years and years and years. It has both information on scholarships that our students have received in the past, but also scholarships that we've just researched. And what's nice about the database is that you can actually meet with one of our current students. One of the service positions that we have is actually students who work on behalf of what we call the Artist Resource Center, which um, kind of owns the database. And so you can meet with a student and they can help direct you to scholarships for which you may be eligible. Oh, okay, that's perfect. So we would have access to that database after we're admitted, not before. Exactly. Yes. Uh, okay, got it. Thanks so much. Sure. All right, Trevor. Hello, how you doing? Good, Good. nice to see you? you. I'm doing great. Um, thank you for having me. I, I asked this question via the QA. Uh, thingamajig in an email. So if you're going to just go through that, I can just go back on mute. But if I can ask it now, I'll just ask it now. Ask away. Yay! Okay, so what happened was, um, I'm wondering, right, if uh, for the students that are, you know, um, well, okay, first question is, do is there housing available for um, MFA students on campus? And if so, is that um, something that's awarded to people who get scholarships and awards as well? Okay, so yes to the first part, there is graduate student housing. Um, there isn't enough for everyone who applies. However, I always encourage students, if you're admitted to the program, to absolutely submit an application. Um, you can turn down your unit if for whatever reason you don't like it, it's too much money, you wanna live in a different neighborhood. Um, but yes, we do have students who live in on campus in graduate student housing. Um, and you, know, you can definitely um, do better financially if you live a little bit further away from campus. Um, we have students that are in Brooklyn, we have students that are in New Jersey, we have students that are in Washington Heights and Inwood. Um, so there's lots of flexibility, but there absolutely is on campus housing. Um, and I encourage all uh, admitted students to apply for it if, if you don't already live in New York. Um, unfortunately, though, we do not actually cover housing as part of scholarship support. So even the students, uh, the few students who receive full tuition still are responsible for housing. Okay, thank you so much. I appreciate your time. You're welcome. All right, uh, Tamar. Hi. 
Um, I have two quick questions. You mentioned that the FAFSA application is changing this year. So should we not fill it out before December 31st? That's an excellent question. I didn't actually think it was available. Do you know this, Kenny? I think I, I believe the one for 2425 is not available yet, but I thought it's available, but um I think if it's available, definitely fill it out if um and just get ahead of the curve if um if it's available. I believe Yeah, it, I mean it's it, the new one is actually simplified. So you if, if anything, you'll just be giving us more information, but not less. Um, okay. if it is available now and you want to do it before um before December 31st, then that's totally fine. So so if we have so if if what's available right now isn't the updated one, we can still fill it out and it will be fine. Yeah, it'll still come to us. Okay. Just make sure you put the School of the Arts code on it. So <laughs> yes, I wrote it down. Um, and my second question was just to circle back to the question of the scholarship database. So those de the deadlines to submit to those scholarships will are are pat way way in the future. Like if where if we get admitted in in March, let's say, we'll still have time to submit to scholarships for entry in the fall? So that's a very good question and it's a bit complicated. Um, some of the scholarships have much longer lead time. So I try to manage students' expectations. If you're applying for a scholarship in March, um, they may not have a deadline until August and you may not hear until November, right? Um, so what I would recommend that you do is start to do some research on your own right now and see if there are any applications uh, for outside scholarships that have deadlines between now and March. Um, so you can get kind of a bit of a, a leg up. Um, but yeah, the outside, it, it depends on the scholarship, but a lot of them do have kind of longer Long, longer uh, times because they, they have to wait till their board meets or or you know they've come up with new requirements for the next year etc so yeah i think it is it is absolutely incumbent upon um, all of you if if you're seeking scholarship support to start doing some research right now and see what else is out there yeah can you give any kind of like uh tips or keywords for to look out for in terms of scholarships that are directed towards arts or film programs um I'm trying to think, I don't actually look at those myself. Um, the person who does is not on the call, but um, yeah, I mean, I think I would start with just kind of a basic Google search, you know, graduate, I mean, make sure you're putting in graduate school because there are some scholarships that are just for undergraduates, um, MFA scholarships, um, you know, film screenwriting and directing scholarships, you know, um, the other scholarships, uh, many of them are by, um, what's the term, like, uh, you know, your your particular um, either demographic makeup. So like there's, you know, we have some scholarships that, you know, for a student who went to undergraduate school in Vermont, like <laughs> so random ones like that. So if you have a particular, you know, students who, are, you know, come from a particular ethnic background or religious background, um, so you can certainly search those terms as well um, and see what you come up with. But, you know, we would circulate the information um, sometime in March. But yeah, I think, but you're right in, in questioning whether or not you would actually have money in hand in September. It's unlikely. Okay, thank you. Sure. All right, uh, Leah. Hi, um, I just want to make sure I have this like totally right. So for the non outside scholarships, the one that just like Columbia will award, um, do we have to submit anything um, like more than just the FAFSA and our regular? application for those? Yes, there's a second application, which we call the School of the Arts Financial Aid application. Um, you can find that through the application portal. So if you log into the application portal, you should see in the drop down menu, that's an option, the School of the Arts Financial Aid application. We ask for that in addition to the FAFSA. That one provides us more information and that's the application, the only one that international students need to submit because they are not eligible for funds through the FAFSA. Does that answer your question? Yeah, and then I was also wondering for the um, TA positions and the service positions, um, say we get accepted in the spring, is that when we would start applying for them or would we apply for those when the semester already starts? So it depends on your program. Which program are you interested in? Um, the screenwriting and directing. Screenwriting, okay. So for screenwriting and directing, the TA positions don't happen until your second year. So you would apply for them as a first year student. Um, the service positions, those that are eligible for first years, um, most of them, as I said, are second and third years, but for the first year, uh, the ones that are eligible for first years, um, those you would hear about in the summer. We would send them to you close to the start of classes and then you could apply for them. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. 
Oh, I thought I saw another hand up. I think I guess you put it down. Um, yeah, I think one thing we do, I, I want to make clear again, there there are two um for everybody has to submit a school of the arts financial aid application to to be whether you're domestic or international, because I see a few questions in the chat about that. So if you if you want any type of scholarship from the School of the Arts, you must submit the School of the Arts financial aid application. And that's you can start a new application through the application portal and it will be labeled 2024 financial aid. Um, so please, please make sure to submit that. We've had many instances where students are admitted and they never submitted one and they end up not getting any scholarship funding because it's either all spent or because they, it was just, yeah, it was just all late. So um, I can't stress that enough. Please submit that on time. Um, actually, we have a question in the chat here. Uh, how important is it to fill out all windows of the financial aid application for international students? What if many are left blank because there's nothing to declare? Uh, fill up, fill in anything that's pertinent to you. If if it's not pertinent to you, you can, you can leave it blank. It's not a required field. So um, go ahead and do that. Uh, oh, Trevor, your hand is up. Just a quick question, just for confirmation. Um, when it came, you said with the four rides, the rare occasion, there's like 10 to 15 in the entire school. Is that the School of the Arts or is that the, the entire university only 10 to 15? That's an excellent question. That's in the School of the Arts. Okay. That, keep in confirm. mind, we take about, you know, between 250 and 300, I'm sorry, between about 255 and 300 students per year. So there's, you know, maybe 10 or 15 out of that. So they are very hard to, to come by. Um, it's not that we don't have them, but we don't want students to count on getting them because they're really competitive. It's better than thousands. So I'll take 250. I'll take <laughs> if it was the whole university, it would be tens of thousands. So that would be really, yeah. really sad. <laughs> yeah. Woo. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you, Trevor. Uh, Darren. Our, our financial aid decisions made on a daily basis or do not start evaluating them until our February 1st. Um, Darren, I'm sorry to interrupt. Can you speak up? I'm, I'm having a hard time hearing you. Darren, are you here? All right, well, why don't we go on to the next question and we can come back to Darren. All right, uh, Leah. Um, hi, again. Sorry if I missed this. Um, I don't know if it was stated already, but again about the um, in-school scholarships awarded by Columbia, uh, would we find out if we got those um, before the semester starts? Oh, definitely. You would get that as part of your admissions offer. So we send you a letter. Um, well, I shouldn't say that. We we it's a an an e an e letter, <laughs> a letter attached to an email um, that offers you admission, and then at that time gives you your scholarship offer. So you don't have to make a decision about whether or not to come until you have the the financial information in in hand. Okay, great. Thank you. You're welcome, um, Darren. If you want to type in your question in the chat. Um, that may be the best oh, way for us to hear from sorry. you. Sorry, I was having connection issues. Can you hear me okay now? Yeah, we can hear you now. What is your question? Okay, um, are financial aid decisions made on a rolling basis or do you start not start evaluating them until February 1st? Um, we actually don't do financial aid decisions until we are given the list of admitted students from the faculty. Um, so, um, you know, the finance, the, um, your applications due February 1st, but you probably wouldn't hear about them until you receive your admissions offer. In fact, you definitely wouldn't hear about them until you receive your admissions offer. Um, admissions offers range from late February to late March. Um, it really depends upon the concentration. Um, some faculty take a little bit more time to review uh, applications than others. Um, but um, but yes, you would receive the, the uh, financial aid information once you have your, your admissions decision. Did that answer your question? Yeah, thank you. Great, you're welcome. All right, uh, we have a question in the chat. Is the income from work, study, service positions, and teaching positions taxed? Yes, uh, you do have to report that as income uh, when you file your taxes. Um, whether, you know, you may, they, there is gonna be some withholding for, for some of these, um, especially the service positions and the TA positions. Um, but you know, depending depending on you know your income bracket and everything, you you may get that back as a refund. 
uh, Tamar. Um, so just to make sure I get this right, this uh, School of Arts financial aid application, is that in the in the application portal, it's it's you're it's as if you're opening another application in addition to your actual application. That is correct. You're actually starting a new application, but it says 2024 financial aid. Okay, great. If if anyone has problems locating that, then please just get in touch with our office. We can talk you through it. We can do a screen share or something, so you can make sure you find it. Alvaro. Hi, hi. How are you? Good night. Uh, do, you, uh, do you have a, a list about the scholarship, like a, a list you can uh, share with us? We don't have a list right now, um, but we would give you access. We will give you access to the database that we have. It's 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 a database. You actually have to have login credentials in order to access it, um, which is why I'm suggesting that you do some of the research on your own right now, and then once you're admitted to the school and then have login access, then you can then you can look at the outside grants and scholarships information. Okay, thank you. And the the houses uh, the program has uh, is uh, maybe is a uh, uh, lower price or something like that in general. Um, I would say that Columbia Housing is probably in the middle to the upper in, in terms of the cost. Um, most of our students can find cheaper housing um, if they're a little bit further away from campus. Um, so, you know, as I said, there's many students who live in Upper Manhattan, um, Inwood, Washington Heights. Um, there's students who live in Jersey and all the way in Brooklyn, Queens, you know, various different um, areas. Um, you know, how far away you live from campus, um, you know, it, each each program is a little bit different. So if you're an actor, um, the actors are in class and or rehearsal most days from like 9 a.m. till 10 p.m. or 11 p.m. If I were an actor, I'd probably want to be a little bit closer to campus because of that. If you're a writer, um, you may have classes two or three days a week. Um, you may have a total of 15 or 20 hours of classes, and then you're off writing on your own, um, in which case it's perfectly fine to live further out um, because you're not going to be at a rehearsal till you know, 9, 10, 11 p.m. at night. So it really depends on you, um, but that, that would at least be my suggestion. But as I said before, if you're at all interested in on-campus housing, just apply for it and see what you're offered and see if it's within your budget. Um, and if it's not, you, we have an off-campus housing office that can assist students in finding off-campus uh, opportunities. Thank you. You're welcome. Caroline. Hello, thank you so much for this Q&A. I have a quick question about the FAFSA form. So do we, we don't need to send this form to Columbia, right? We just have to mail it out to to the um to the address no it's it's an online form uh so you'll you'll you everything is complete online so you you want to go to the fafsa website mm -hmm. um, and once uh and log in you have to create an fsa account if you don't have one already and when you submit it uh it will be electronically uh sent to columbia i see okay thank you We have what factors determine merit for financial aid? So merit is determined by the admissions committee review of your application. Um, the faculty are the ones who determine uh, who is admitted to the program. This is unlike undergraduate. For undergraduate, there's an admissions office and they're the ones who are for the most part making the decisions. Um, for a graduate school, particularly one that's so specialized, um, it's the actual people who will be teaching you who are determining um, who gets in and who doesn't. And you know that's far better. Um, you know, I wish I could say that I'm an expert in you know sculpture and screenwriting, but I absolutely am not. <laughs> So, um, so uh, it's the actual faculty who are making the decisions as to who they want to teach and who they feel have the, the talent and the potential. Um, so the, the merit portion of, of the financial aid is determined by your application submission. Um, and I would say mostly focus, focused on the creative materials. Um, that's the part of the application that the faculty get most excited about because that really is, is showing what you're bringing to the table in terms of your artistic merit. Um, once we get that information from the faculty admissions committee, then we look at the need portion of it. Um, and, and need is weighed um, more heavily than merit for sure. So we, you know, need is, is the primary factor, um, but we also do take into consideration what the merit um, score is or the merit ranking is from the faculty. Um, and we have this kind of complicated algorithm that um, helps generate uh, scholarship offers that we then submit to you. 
Um, we try to be as fair as possible. Um, and as I said, you know, if you have significant need, we're going to do our best to at least give you something because we understand it's it's an expensive program and an expensive city. And that also includes interviews and, you know, for actors, um, your auditions and, and callbacks. Um, Emerson. Oh, I'm sorry, there's just a very quick question here. Are there service yes. positions available for the first year in MFA acting? No. Um, there could be. Um, most of the service positions are for second and third years. However, um, there are some positions, particularly at the Lenfest Center for the Arts, uh, which is our, pre our uh, presenting house. Um, the Lenfest Center, if you haven't seen it already, it's absolutely beautiful. Um, and it has uh, a gallery, an art gallery. It has a performance space. It has a beautiful screening room. Um, and there are some positions for first years up there uh, as ushers, as greeters, that type of thing. Um, so yeah, actors, it's a little bit trickier because as I said, you're in classes a lot, but those those um, positions tend to be after hours. So, um, you know, there's there's the possibility of that. All right. Uh, all right, Emerson. Uh, hi, and please let me know if this is a question better suited for, you know, another department. Uh, but I know you mentioned in, in theater that the TA positions tend to be fewer and farther between. Uh, are those determined on a semester? Like, are do those vary by the semester? Or are there kind of a set few that uh, generally you know that people will be up for? So the reason that there are fewer um, teaching positions in theater versus the other programs is that Columbia actually does not have an undergraduate theater program. Bizarrely enough, the undergraduate theater uh, program is actually housed at Barnard across the street. So if you're a Columbia undergraduate, male or female, it doesn't matter, you're still taking classes at Barnard. Um, occasionally, Barnard will need a TA for one of their undergraduate classes, and they will hire some of our theater MFA students. But in general, um, the other three programs, there's, there's an undergraduate department at Columbia, visual arts and film and writing, which is why they have many more TA positions than theater. Um, so it's not that it's impossible, but they're, you know, way way fewer positions we don't usually know until you know a couple months before we get contacted by the barnard undergraduate theater department and they'll say you know we have one position open we have two positions open um our, our students have done them and you know the pay is the same and it's great experience but you're you're the least likely to get a ta position as a theater student than you are in the the other three all right that makes sense thank you i appreciate it you're welcome all right uh Saren? oh hi again I also had a quick question. Um, I'm interested in the MFA writing program and I was wondering like how many students are admitted every year approximately and and how, what percentage of the writing students are receiving financial aid in general? So we have approximately, I would say between 55 and 60 fiction students per year. Um, we tend to have between 32 and 34 nonfiction and around 18 to 20 poetry. Um, so it's a large program. Um, we actually think of that as one of the benefits because there are the, the size of the faculty is, is significant. Um, and so you're studying with many different voices, which is great. Um, the other question, what, what is the, was it the average scholarship for writing? I, I don't have that in front of me, but it's somewhere in, you know, as I said before, it's like the 25,000 range, 25 to 30,000 per year. Um, but again, there are, there are scholarships that are less, there's scholarships that are more. Um, we get new scholarship support every year. Uh, everything that we have, we give out. Um, so um, we do our best to make it affordable. Um, that being said, there are many students that have to find money from other sources, whether it's loans or um, you know, outside grants and scholarships as well. Okay, perfect. Thanks so much. You're welcome. Uh, there's a question here. Are MFA applications considered on a rolling basis? Uh, no. Applications uh, applications for admissions are actually all read at once after the deadline, and everything is reviewed at once. So it's not reviewed on a rolling basis. All right. And I'm seeing a question. There are six forms then. There are definitely not six forms. <laughs> there are two forms of financial aid forms. Um, if you are an, and if you're an international student, there's only one form. So let, let me just, and, and, and maybe one of you guys can put it in the chat as well. Um, if you are a domestic student, if you're a U.S. citizen or a permanent resident, there are two forms you need to submit. One is the FAFSA, which is the official um, application for federal aid. And one is the School of the Arts financial aid application, which is a separate application from your program application. So let's say you're applying uh, to be an actor, um, you're gonna submit your application for acting. And then there's another application in the same portal that's called School of the Arts financial aid application. You, you start that application and you submit your information that way. 
So that's uh, domestic students need to do both of those. International students only have to do the School of the Arts financial aid application, which is the one that you access through the application portal. Um, does that make sense? Is there, are there any other questions about that? Again, if you have problems finding it, please reach out to our office and we can do some kind of screen share or we can do a Zoom call and, and make sure that you know how to access that application. But it is absolutely crucial that you submit that application by the deadline if you wanna be considered for scholarship support. Uh, what else do we have here? Forms. Oh, uh, Darren. Um, so I noticed in the financial aid application, oh, sorry, frog in my throat. Um, I noticed in the financial aid application, there's a section where you break down how you plan on um, paying for tuition and cost of living. Do you have any recommendations on how to fill that out if your financial situation is currently a little tenuous? Can you can you clarify what you mean by fill uh, like filling out a the financial aid form? Are you talking um, about a section where it asks for um, anecdotal information? There's there, there's a section in which you can kind of give an explanation as to your particular situation. Is that what you're talking about? Specifically, the part I, I saw a section where it asks you to break down um, how you plan on paying for tuition and cost of living. So, like loans, um, scholarships, uh, work, things like that. Um, do you have any recommendations for how to fill that out? Since obviously we we don't know going in like what kind of financial aid we'll be getting from Columbia yet. Um, and so just like what your recommendation would be for how to put in that information. I mean, I think the best thing to do is, is what you anticipate or what you're hoping for. So, um, you know, often students will say, I, you know, I'm hoping to fund this through a combination of scholarships, loans, personal savings, and um, support from family or something like that. Um, we're not gonna hold you to that because we realize that a lot of this information you don't have at the time of, of application, but at least gives us a sense of, of um, the sources of funding that you're hoping to put forward. Does that answer your question? Well, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. I also wanna add the purpose of that is also to, we want, when students are admitted, we want students to think about funding, how to plan out how how they're gonna fund this education. You know, if, if, it, if it's through FAFSA, at least, you know, You'll be applying for you'll be applying for loans through FAFSA, and and you know you're you're anticipating a certain amount of outside scholarship funding. Again, like like Julie mentioned, family help, things like that. So we we want we just want students to plan ahead and and kind of think about how, how they would how they'll be um, funding this education. Are there any other questions? Trevor. I told myself I wasn't going to ask any more questions, but then something just came up. So no, um, ask away, ask away. That's what we're here for. <laughs> listen, listen. Okay, so uh, I just thought about this. I know this is an insane question. Has has an um uh has an admission decision ever been made because of somebody's financial situation? Like, okay they are going to be completely dependent upon being awarded money from the school and therefore we can't admit them to the school has that ever happened before or this finance is not coming to play when it comes to being admitted into the program not at all the faculty who are making the decision as to who is going to be admitted do not have access to your financial information so okay. that's that's what our office does our office has the financial aid information and once we are told by the faculty who they want to admit then it's our job to put together the financial package for you um, okay you know, faculty will never, you know, say, well, you know, this person doesn't have the resources and therefore we won't admit them. They're not going to know what your resources are and they're not going to know if you've have applied for support, but just that's what we do. So don't worry about that. Okay, cool. Just, just you know, just thought I'd ask. Why not? No, oh, it's a good question. It's a good question, Trevor. Um, just one just came in. If we get admitted, how long do we have to accept or decline or defer our offer? Uh, First, I want to say deferrals are actually rare. Uh, they're on a usually it's because if it's a medical reason or or a visa issue or something. So usually deferrals are are, are rare. Um, you and the response deadline is, has typically been around April fifteenth. 
So that's it's been across the board. So um, so you'll probably have around April fifteenth uh, from when you uh, receive your decision. And that will range from late February to late March. So right. depending upon the program. So some people may have a month and a half. Some people may have three weeks. Um, April 15th is pretty standard. So I think you'll find if you're applying to other graduate schools, they're going to want your decision by then as well. Um, you know, we try to get the decisions out as soon as we can, um, but it's really up to the faculty review committee. As we said, they're the ones who are actually doing the review and we want to give them the time they need, um, you know, to make sure that they are really, um, you know, paying attention to each and every application. So, um, yeah, we will get those out as soon as we can, but, um, April 15th is typically the response deadline. Uh, Mosiah, I hope I didn't butcher that. You didn't. You got it perfectly. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> I wanted to ask you guys, um, this is more of an open-ended question, but what do you feel like are some things that you feel like year by year students tend to overlook when applying for, or applicants tend to overlook when applying for financial aid? That you feel like is like important to know or that important to not overlook what do you what do you feel like it's a trend of like oh man they shouldn't have like overlooked this part or this would benefit them to know or to take advantage of more well the first thing i would say is they either miss the deadline or they don't submit the application at all <laughs> so when we send out your uh admissions notice in in uh you know in march sometime they'll say wait why didn't i get any scholarship support and we say well where was your financial aid application it was due in february so that's most important please 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 if you want a scholar to be considered for scholarship you've got to submit it and you got to submit it on time kenny or nequette you guys have anything else to add i was that that's exactly what i was going to say because that that really is the biggest one um not submitting the financial aid application um also you know don't lie on the application. A lot of times they overstate how much they how much support they're going to get from the outside. And then when they're admitted, they're like, oh no, we, you know, they they tell us, you know, they embellished that part or something. Be truthful. Let us know if you if you're not expecting any outside support, let us know because we because that's what we're basing our financial aid um uh, decisions on. So if we see that you're get you you think you're getting a hundred thousand dollars in outside scholarship and, and and it wasn't true, we're basing our decision off that. So, you know, just make sure you're you're truthful in, in um in all the information you enter. It's really helpful. Thank you. Anybody else? I put the email address again in the chat for the financial aid office. Um, so if you send an email to that, you'll hear from me or Kenny or Nequette. Um, and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. But um Oh, I just saw another question come in. Do most students only have work study jobs inside the university or do many find jobs outside the university as well? Well, international students can only work for the university. Um, domestic students are all over the place. We have some domestic students who have had jobs prior to coming to grad school and have been able to keep them. Um, you know, sometimes they'll, they'll reduce from full-time to part-time. Um, we've had students that have had remote jobs from, you know, that where they're, they're working for companies that are outside of New York. Um, so yeah, it runs the gamut. Students work everywhere. Um, but international students just know that you are limited to uh, jobs within the university. And all students are limited to um, 20 hours a week for Columbia positions. Um, so, you know, if you have a job that's outside, you can work as many hours as you want. But if you're working at Columbia, then it's it's a 20 hour a week limit. Oh, one thing I just thought about um, for the for that financial aid application for international students. This financial aid application, when we ask for your funding sources and everything, this is not for your visa. So back to the embellishing part, we, you know, some we we don't, we're not looking at this to determine whether you get your visa or not. That's handled through a completely the ISSO office, the International Students and Scholars Office. So they they're the ones, and you'll work with the Department of Homeland Security to to submit um financial information about how how you'll um how you'll afford the program uh to get your visa. So you know, our financial aid application is completely separate from the visa process. So you know, you don't have to worry about um, putting in information of, um, that you don't um, to to try to get up to the cost of attendance. Uh, Jade. Hello, can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay, so um, full transparency, you were like, we want students to think about their financial aid, which is why like you're prompting us to ask these questions. Uh, I'm out here just, you know, surviving on faith. I have not thought about this at all until this session right now. <laughs> That's why we're having so, you here. We want you to think about it. 
and I'm like, you know what? My savings is not looking like what it needs to look like. So um, as far as like being honest on the application and all of these things, for someone who's like, I don't think I'll have family support when it comes to this. Like they support my dream and ambitions, all that, but financially, that's not going to be a thing. So it's really just whatever I can save between now and of course, assuming I get accepted, um, whatever I can save between now and then, which I do not know, I just have like saving goals that I'm working toward personally. It's not like a set figure. And then um, it would be like whatever the school has to offer and then whatever scholarships I can find online, maybe write an essay. I don't know what, I haven't been in school. I haven't been under that in a while, so I can't even really remember what all it says outside scholarships. Um, so my, my primary question is like, have you guys ever have students who just do not have the resources who can still somehow like you can start to get into the school? I mean, of course, I don't want to help with um, guidance on what it would take to really fully cover the cost of attending. Not quite certain I heard your entire question, so stop me if I didn't, because you were in and out a little bit. Um, was you, it seemed like you were asking whether um, we meet with students or advise students on how to afford their education. Is that is that correct? Yes. Thumbs up. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So um, if you are admitted, um, and we hope you are, um, you can absolutely meet with one of us. Um, you know, we, uh, you know, in, in addition, obviously, we will send you. Um, your admissions letter, we will send you a breakdown of your financial aid package. Um, and then at that point, there's many students that have questions um, and we are available to meet with you, whether it's in person and Zoom, phone call, absolutely. Um, we want students to be able to afford to come here. Um, so we will do what we can to uh, make that happen for you and to advise you as to whatever resources may be available to help you with that. Oh, all right, I got a heart. <laughs> Excellent. Well, it's eight o'clock. Um, so I think we're going to wrap up for tonight. Um, but this does not have to end this conversation. Um, just so you know, as I said, we are here to answer questions throughout the process, um, particularly as we get closer to February 1st deadline. Remember, February 1st deadline. Um, we are here to support you. Um, and, you know, we hope to see your applications in. Columbia is a, a really terrific place to get your MFA. I did it myself and I highly, highly recommend it. Um, and we're here to, to help support you however we can. Um, so thank you so much for coming tonight and uh, we hope to see your applications in soon. Yes. Happy holidays, yeah. take care. Happy holidays, thank you for attending everybody. Bye everyone. Bye, take care. Have a great one. Bye.